think she's staying with us now. There was hashtag NSAS and a hashtag 545 demand. And despite the dissolution of the special anti robbery squad as the SARS and the federal government agreeing to the 545 demands, the Nigerian youth are still on the street with various hashtags sprouting from left, right, center. There's hashtag SWAT, um, end SWAT, there's hashtag end NAS as national. <laughs> assembly there's hashtag new nigeria and so many unending demands you know and some have argued that if the youth truly i mean if they truly understand and they truly know what they want as it seems like they are shifting you know Ground. the goal post yes they're shifting the goal post and is this protest truly a, an awakening for the nigerian youth that's the question we're asking is this real is it that, okay, yes, 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 you know, Charlie Boy, you always used to do this, um, uh, Mumu don't do, yeah. and all of that. Is it, have we gotten to that point? And that's the question a lot of people are asking. And so we would like to hear what you have to say. Please join the conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waze Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Waze Show or send us an SMS on 081-803-84663. Is that an SMS or WhatsApp? So... AK, maybe I will start with you first mm -hmm. before I come to Uti Elu. What do you think about this protest that has been ongoing? Is it looking like we're truly shifting goalposts? Because some people are tired. So now there's 7 for 7, there's 9 for 9, there's hashtag this, hashtag that. You know, okay, the government, we asked for something and the government had already responded. So why are we still on the streets? Well, you can't blame any Nigerian youth that has been surviving with this government for a long time. Now, you would not also blame the Nigerian youth for not trusting the government. You have seen that screenshot, that from 2017 up to date, government has been making different promises. So either they're saying they have stopped SARS from conducting the stop and search, or they say they have disbanded the unit. If, if this had happened, we would not be here. Mm -hmm. So you can clearly see why they attempt audio promises. Mm. This is not the first protest that we would have. In 2017, there was a protest with I Stand With Nigeria. We also had Occupy Nigeria, and there were promises. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the assurance that these things that you have said you would do, you're doing them? Okay, you came out and you told us that you have disbanded SARS. There will be no more SARS, even before you announced the SWAT. But on that very day, even till today, people are still citing, you know, S um, SARS members all over the country. Okay, so now... So um, how will we... No, let me just land. Yeah, and and land. I want you to, to see why they're not trusting this government. Mm. So there must be... And I see that some we have started ticking up... Let, let me... The one that I'm updated with, the 505. You just come out after one day of ending SARS to start SWAT. Who will, who will believe that? Mm. What do you take us for? Mm. Put some strategic thinking into this thing. At least if you want to even like, come out, like, let it be intelligent. Mm. You get. Okay, so what the, what the, pro, um, the government is saying. Now, um, well, we must give it to Governor Sonwolu, right? Even if some people are saying that, oh, no, he's playing to the galleries. and No, he's been able to at least tick off three from those five demands that we've asked for. Mm -hmm. He's taking people off every um what's it called um every um that has been arrested all the protesters that have been arrested he's also set a set yeah, funds aside for um what's it called for the the victims of the the he set funds aside or he had promised that he would no he has they've actually set a 200 million fund aside Side. you know yeah. i think there's one more but i'll come to that but before i come to that let me hear uti's thoughts on the protest and what your thoughts are concerning, why we're still on the street, and it seems like, and is this an awakening for Nigerians? Like, are we really, a, uh, not the word, woke? Yeah, <laughs> are we woke? So, I mean, it's interesting, Ua. I've had some very, very interesting facts. The other day on my WhatsApp um, status, I had to put it up to say, I've had some very interesting conversations around this protest, and I try to avoid um, just jumping on the bandwagon for things like this. And I like to ask pertinent questions or questions that are pertinent to me when I assess these kind of situations. I mean, it's fantastic that I, you know, as, as a nation, um, as a generation, young people are coming out to say enough is enough. Um, but what for me stands out is um, the fact that we, our first demand was NSARS, NSARS, NSARS. 
And typically, when you ask somebody to do something, if you don't tell them how, if you don't tell them how you want it done, they will do it however they think is fit. Yeah. So the government then said, yes, we'll end SARS, and here's how we're going to do it. Here's five things. And then we came back with five for five, and you know, we then had five demands. So my question is, oh, if it had been seven, would it have been seven for seven? Now it's seven for seven. And I still think 10 for 10 is loading. So I also feel that this momentum is fantastic, but we now need to actually channel it to real change. So I understand the not wanting to come together to, to become a collective. We are many, we are legion, however you wish to look at it. But there, do, there does need to be some structure to move the conversation forward. Because for me, it goes way beyond SARS. It's yes. down to how we're going to, not just the police force, but the whole of Nigeria is bleeding. The whole of Nigeria is weeping. And if we truly, truly want change, we have to use this momentum for something. So mm -hmm. the fact that Somolu is doing what he's doing, um, Governor Somolu is doing what he's doing in Lagos, there are 36, 35 other states and the FCT. Exactly. Um, Faz has written his letters. He's targeting the Human Rights Commission. So it's very fragmented. So for me, I'm, I'm like, okay, so... We're going to, I asked someone the other day, I said, what's the plan? Are we going to stay on the streets and protest till election day 2023? So I kind of understand that there is a huge lack of trust. And even what the government has done in the last um, few days shows the arrogance of our leadership. Mm. Now, I don't agree, or I, let me put it this way. I disagree with the fact that NSARS don't give us what. I agree that, you know, there needs to be some more thought and efforts to it. Mm -hmm. But there's also the thinking that says you can't leave the gap. Crime still exists. There are elements within this that will take advantage of this um, as we come into the, the, the months of the year where we know the crime typically does, does spike up. So you can't come out today and go from SARS to SWAT to whatever else it is you want to come up with. You have to be a little bit more um, strategic about it. You have to show the people mm. there's a serious lack of trust mm. and to me what stands out is that the government either has complete and total disregard they're completely arrogant mm. or they just don't get it that the populace don't trust them and i can't believe that they're that that i don't want to use the word clueless but i mean it's impossible to think that anybody you can, you can borrow naive be, whether your leadership or the people okay. don't understand that there's a lack of trust so how do you build trust you build trust by taking swift action mm. by now why is the IGP still in office? Mm. Certain things need to have happened to, have given, to show yeah. the people that, you know what, the government is taking us seriously. But the government is dropping the ball on that side. But we also need to take this momentum and run with it for true change. Awesome. If not, it will fizzle out and we won't have achieved anything. Okay, I, I and don't if know we if don't the... achieve something on this campaign, it will set us back another 50 years. Absolutely. I don't know if we have Esther on the on via Zoom. I don't know if she's there because she is, you know, she is the one that is trying to, um, to, to let us understand what is happening in Abuja. She's the frontliner in Abuja, Jonathan Esther. She's joined us via, you know, Zoom uh, in Abuja. If she's there, we'll, we'll take her. But let me take a few comments, you know, because tr um, people are already t trickling in. And Uti, I think you have some, some comments. Um, let me take a few comments on WhatsApp. Okay, say so police must reform we agree if this country can cannot be uh, uh, if not this country cannot be in other country can you be a lot more articulate when you are trying to send in your messages so it can help us really but esther good evening thank you so much for joining us um esther are you there Okay, I think we're trying to get Esther. So while we're trying to get Esther, Uti, can you take some uh, comments? Um... So, th so this comment is exactly in line with what I was saying. So this is from Adeshino, and he says, good evening, and thank you for the good job you're doing. My take is that the youth must be ready to negotiate at a certain point, or else we lose the gains. Change is gradual, and the government seems to be responding. So I don't agree with that last statement, but definitely he's, he's spot on. It. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask you why you don't agree yet, but I think Akanimo has some more comments. Okay, so we have this one from Angela. Angela says, I have a challenge to how long this would hold. The government is working on getting universities at NYC back. The most likely, this most likely will affect the movement. Okay, so <laughs> this is what I want to say to Esther. That you should actually Angela, check. Sorry, Angela. Apologies. Angela, please just check the active people in this campaign and tell me if you think that they are students or people that are, or youth call members. Just check. That's all I have to say. Because just, I, just check. I hear 80% of them are graduates. But you see, can we just have um, 
for me i think we did a we did a small video because i went to the streets in lekki um lekki toll the lekki toll um uh, what's it called protest and i got a few people you know to talk on why they are still on the streets and mm -hmm. maybe uh, for me if um if my producer can hear me to call for that video yeah just let's get that video we want a better country we want a better nigeria we want our passport to stand out we don't want people to just think that we are just some set of people from some bush country that don't know anything because as you can see there are a lot of learned people here creative minds geniuses upon geniuses artists but why are we being killed why are we being overtaxed i mean we want a better country we want to be able to have health care we want to have lights we want to have good roads we want everything that we are meant to have that we're being taxed for i don't want to see somebody walking around with a resource that can pay 10 people's salaries and you are a government official come on uh -huh. why is your salary why do you have hardship allowance whereas the people that are going through hardship are not getting anything so we're here for that. We're here to make sure that we have a better future, that we have a better life. I mean, just because I'm fortunate, it doesn't mean that the next person isn't. And if everything goes haywire, they'll come for some of us that they don't know that we're working hard for what we have. So, I mean, if the country is better, everybody's going to be happy. I mean, look at people, the way people are dragging for food, looking for food. You can see that there's hunger in the land. So we are here to fight for a better country, not fight, protest for our basic human rights. To the people, please let's be patient. I'm sure everything will work out fine in our favor, so says the Lord. And to the government, we too would not like to be here for, you know, disrupting the peace, if people want to put it that way, or holding down the economy, but we will do what we must for us to live a better life. I mean, we can't be treated like foreigners in our own land. We are Nigerians. We all are melanated. We are all blessed with all different kinds of ethnicities and diverse people. So why do we feel like we're foreigners in our land? Why are people complaining that when they get to the airport, they would appreciate a foreigner more than we in our own land? I mean, we need to feel at home in our own home. Please give us that right to life and to the things we need. Okay, absolutely. That was from Shei um, Awolowoy, <laughs> you know. And I still have a few that we'll call for later. But uh, let me hear Esther. Thank you so much for joining us, Esther. Esther has joined in from Abuja. I think we're still having, are we still having trouble getting Esther? You know, so let, let, me, let me hear you, AK. So there was, there was something that he said there that I took, is that we do not want to be strangers in our own land. And it's, oh, it's very painful. You're at the airport with a foreigner. That's so you travel to their land, they get preference. Okay, mm. you're no longer queue and all that. And then you come back here and receive the same treatment. Mm. You know, that for me, what he said, it, it stood out. And the fact that the reason why people are on the road is that they just want to get assurance that you are hearing us. And Uti had rightly said, the behavior is showing the opposite. Mm. Now, let me let you know that this was, is not even new. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not even new. And if you look at everything and the efforts, uh, tomorrow they're saying COVID, that um, we are going, they're going to ban the protest because of COVID. Please, hello, excuse me. There was rally in Ondo, in Edo. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Did you forget? So it's like you're trying to pull out different rabbits from your heart to, instead of listening to us, if you put that effort... To just listen. To just listen I, and I, actually I'm so happy you just said this believe. because we saw Pastor Itwa, uh, but we'll call for his video much later. We saw him and this was exactly what he was saying about the government not listening to us, you know. The government not listening to us. It seems like we're talking, but they are not listening You're to just us. Doing the, yeah. The but Uti, you wanted to quickly comment on that before I have Esther on. Oh, um, I keep saying it. Every time I hear... Oh, the government, so, I mean, again, conspiracy theorists unite, right? Yeah. I've been hearing all sorts of, the internet is coming down. Twitter was down globally last night. It was like, oh, they have Twitter. So, I mean, the reality of it is, I, I think that the government is doing more to gaslight this situation than they are to allay the and fears, yeah. put the protest to bed. I don't think that the government understands how powerful a collective can be I would suggest that if there are strategists within the government, they go and do some research and uprisings mm -hmm. around the world to see how it can quickly have a snowball effect. So do you believe, Uti? Key wrong decisions that are made. Uti, are you, are you so, saying that what, what, you, what I hear you say is that are you truly believing that this is truly a wake-up call? For the government uh, and and the youths are truly, you know, they they've been they've been, uh, I think, resurrected from their slumber or something. What word will I use? 
think, I, don't, I don't think that um, the government have woken up. I think that if the government had has woken up, they would move a lot faster. Mm. So as it is right now, it feels like the government is thinking as they always think. It's that arrogance of power, right? That we can wait it out. Mm. So these guys will fizzle out. And to be, I must give kudos to the people who are in their different collectives coordinating this thing. They are using the strategy of the politicians around us. Mm. Keep people fed, keep people watered, <laughs> make sure their phones are charged. They will park well. When I saw the picture at the lucky toll gate of a snooker table, I thought, man, the strategy is on point. <laughs> so you got to salute, right? So the reality of it is if the government fails to understand and they choose to be the usual, their usual yeah. arrogance that thinks, oh, this thing will fizzle out. And this is not even for me a perspective of youth. It doesn't matter who would be on the street. The government is just arrogant enough to think that, no, what? this thing, give it another five days, it will all be over. And the longer they do that, the more they fuel the people. People see the disregard mm. and they're like, nah, man, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not going to take it anymore. And people are coming out in their droves. So I think the government just needs to face up to the truth. Absolutely. Nigerians want change. We want things to be different mm. at every level, mind you. This is not a generational fight. Mm -hmm. This is the every single Nigerian exactly. wants a better Nigeria. Exactly. Absolutely. I was going to take a comment from um, Saliu. He says... Hashtag ways. My take is we have a lot of issues that needs resolution. We have to use this time to make this happen. And um, Angela says the government seems not to have a better strategy for responding to this protest. Um, this protest have shown that we have great minds preferring solutions, and which is good with what I have seen. For the first time, you know, these are a group of intellectuals. We're not just, you know, these people are actually sitting down, you know, drawing out the map to say, you know what, this is X, Y, Z problem. And we are giving you X, Y, Z solutions to our problems. You know, why can't you as a government be humble enough to say, you know what, I want to, no, that's the truth. Be humble enough to say, I want to learn from these young people. We are intelligent minds in Nigeria. We're not, we're not pushovers. Because anywhere a Nigerian goes to, they thrive. So why, why can't we... Um, exact that amount of energy in Nigeria and become, you know, I mean, make this country truly great and be placed on the world map. We're already putting the name Nigeria on the world map in our small, small pockets. So there's something else I wanted us to address, but I think we'll do that right after the break because um, people are complaining about sabotage for this protest. People are complaining about no structure, no leadership and all of that. Is that a blessing for us? Or how are we going to manage it to ensure that, you know, this um, protest is not, uh, in, in the end, is not a waste of our time. So mm -hmm. we'll see you after the break to discuss more. Stay with us.